Dude, I have nothing this week. Nothing? Nothing this week. You come through fire all epic like this and you don't have a story to tell the tale of an attorney. You have a cat in your lap. I always do, man. Do you always? We can't always see down there. Is he always there every single time most we record the, this? Most of the time. Not every time. Usually he makes don't his presence warm? known. Well, yeah, but it's cold, man. It's a cold day. It's been chilly. He has a little bit in of separation Chile, anxiety. Texas. In Texas? Uh, yeah. Are you cold? We have an apocalypse. You can't see it outside, but we basically had a blizzard today. Really? See, this weekend, we're having a low of 11. Uh, whoa. I know. I think that might even be beating what we're at right now, actually. That's pretty low. Actually, um, if you, if oh, you see right, right. 11 right now. Um, <laughs> point proven. We were supposed to get negative something. The, the po- something known as the polar vortex. It's supposed to come again. This this happened two years ago, and it's supposed to get to like negative a bajillion degrees. But right now the it's, the lake is frozen. That sounds like something I'd want to stop if I was in a D and D world. You know, you got to go stop the polar vortex, or there's a oh, yeah. ritual that happens every polar vortex. Check out the Icewind Dale. We just have the we just have the frost maiden outside He's freezing the lake, freezing the river. They're frozen over completely. Do people well, ice probably, skate on probably on the top. I don't know if that'd be super safe because I imagine it as like on surface level, sure. there's 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 ice, but below there's a lot of stuff moving, That's going fair. fast, shit's happening. And honestly, that kind of leads in a bit of to what we're gonna talk about today. And there might be some lead up here, so I'm being preemptive. So Ryan, we were chatting, we were talking about things and stuff as as we do. We do. We just talk before outside this podcast. the podcast. No, again, we hate each other, so we don't we don't talk yeah. at all. That's the part. But you were talking, and I was talking, and you were talking to Julie about her friend, who then started talking to you. Yeah. So my, what was that whole situation? Sure, man. So my girlfriend, uh, her name is Julie. She uh, is, you know, we talk about her every so often on the podcast, and she's never played D anD D, but she's definitely been interested in it before. We made a character together once. My actually my character in the live play we made together and one of her and her first character is someone important my backstory and so it was kind of a a fun thing to do together well her friend messaged her and they called a while a few days ago they were talking about getting a game going and i was like hey that's sick you know i'm all down for more people get involved in dnd and they're all new players and new dm uh she loves world building that the dm that's going to be playing and uh but she saw you know D and D is tough to get into when you first pick it up. I mean, you see, there's three books. There's the player's handbooks, like you know, yay big. It's like three hundred some odd pages. There's a Not lot of many. information. There's a lot of information. A lot of jargon too. You're like, what's a charisma save? What's this? What's that? What? How do I make my stats? So it can be a little overwhelming. And I think it's easy after you've been playing it for a while to forget this. At the first, I mean, the first time I made a character, I was so confused. I I I'd watched I've watched Critic Role, so I, I knew how it played, but I didn't. I was like, I don't know how to make this character. How do I get going? So it took a long time. I think the first time I made a character actually might have been like an hour, three hours or so of like working just to understand what I was reading. And now you know, m- multiple years into playing Dungeons and Dragons with friends, and we still don't fucking know how to play. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, now we know a little bit more, right? And so it, it's it's easy to forget this. And it's got a kind of a tough learning curve. And so her friend was ask, started asking me questions. And you know, I kind of opened myself up and said, hey, if you got anything you know, that you're confused about, toss some stuff my way. And she asked what I would consider very simple questions. But then when I thought about it, I was like, those are the exact questions I had when I started. What does this table mean? What, is, how do, what are these classes? I kind of understand what a barbarian is, but how does it play in the context of D&D? How does combat work? So we're going to kind of slow things back, rein it in. We kind of already did a class focused episode on the wizards. We probably should have done this beforehand, but we just, you know, we were we were kind of taking it for granted. We're learning as we go. We're taking it for granted that everyone always already knows what all these classes are and how to play them and what they do instead of diving deeper into them. We should just give an overview. So that's what this Precisely. is going to be. So in summary, he's Ryan. He's Braxton. I think we got it right this time. We're the Dungeon Crawl, and today we want to go through the classes in a very general aspect to give you an idea as to what they are, 
what they do and where they sit in terms of playing a game and how that feels. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to caveat this at a little asterisk for everybody that's listening that knows this and that feels like this is going to be a really boring episode. Let me flip it on its head. Let's see Ryan's lie. He, he's very right. This is going to be a great episode because if you're a DM or a player, you want to help people, right? You want to make sure people like this game. You want to get them into it. So this can help you formulate or figure out a way to explain this to some of your newer friends who might be getting into it. It's like, oh, I remember this is how they worded it on a podcast that I listened to, and I'm going to tell them it that way. So not for even, you, not even just that veterans. too. I mean, think about Braxton from your perspective. How many different classes have you played? <laughs> okay, now it's. I like to meme that it's one, and it's. I still haven't played a lot, but Warlock, and I've played a fighter once. Mm -hmm. And how many classes so not, not are there? Thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirteen. So that's player's handbook plus one. Yeah, that's a lot of other classes that. He hasn't even touched yet. So this is also good for players that have been playing for a little bit. They kind of need a refresher on these other classes that maybe, you know, you kind of, if you listen to our Tasha's review, I kind of, you know, irked, was, you know, given the dirty eye to a couple classes. And I'm sure there's some other players out there that look at certain classes in a painful way. So this, Wait, which one are you giving a dirty eye to? There's a couple and classes I didn't really like, man. Oh, well, yeah, there's the ranger. Player's Handbook Ranger. Well, they're, yeah. they're working on it. But so this, I can imagine there's people out there that, you know, think the fighter sucks or the cleric sucks, you know? So hopefully this will get you a new appreciation, though, that each class kind of has its own purpose and maybe it'll let you try out a different class at some point down the line. Yeah. And I also forget at some point you, you build up a bunch of knowledge and you just really forget how hard it is getting like that first time ryan was describing guidance he's like what the hell is going on so this again there's going to be new stuff that we learn here so are I we just starting with the exact I think order about it, i think the very first class i ever made the first character i ever made mm -hmm. was using this play the scene doesn't exist because dnd beyond wasn't out yet now it's a lot easier to you you walk through you know dnd beyond if you know what that is you can just go to the website and very easily make a, a class. You can do it for free. You don't have everything available to you, but you can do it for free and just kind of at least see how things work. I use this thing. I think it was called like Orc Pub 2. I think it still is oh. I think it's still around, but they, they don't have all the features anymore because D&D Beyond was like, we got to get rid of all these other things that can do what we're going to do better. Um, so I use that to make my class just like how D&D Beyond does. So even still, I didn't do it how I probably should have. That's how you got me to do mine as well. I'm like, this is a great tool, Ryan. Thank you so much. I and like know. a week later, you're like, yeah, you might want to yeah, figure something out because it's it's going away. So it was basically what D&D &D Beyond it was with yeah. a lot of the resources in there, which obviously free. copyright can't do that yeah. or free. But D&D &D Beyond, there that. wasn't a resource that Wizards of the Coast had that allowed you to do it for free or allowed you to do it easily. So they saw this and decided, you know, we're going to make money off of new players. Yeah. All righty. Where are we starting with? Well, let's start at the top of the list with the good old Artificer, man. It's a new class, so if you don't have the player's handbook, then you, or if you have the player's handbook and none of the, nothing else, then you will probably have no idea what this class is. It has been in uh, Unearthed Arcana for a long time. And if you're new here and you don't know what Unearthed Arcana is, it's this, <laughs> uh, basically their playtest area, where they'll just release stuff into the ether and let us test it and try it out and Artificer's been there for, like, since 2012. It's been around for a long, long, long time. It was fully released in Eberron, though. Yes. So, I had no idea it's been around that long. Yeah. And this is probably, weirdly enough, one of the classes that I don't know a lot about. Yeah. And you'd think I would because I like new, I like exciting things. But I've never been a super big I don't want to say, I'm, okay, I'm not against it or not. I'm not, not a big fan. I just, it doesn't interest me a ton. So I haven't learned about it. So let's dive sure. into this thing. What is this? So the artificer class? is very much kind of the guy that's crafty. They want to make things. You can kind of think about it like a, a smith that makes magic things. Tinkerer. Yeah, tinkerer. That's a good way to word it. Um, Kind of like a Tony Stark kind of guy that's crafting and making these tools. There's even some, some things that can, you make it and then it fights with you. Um, I'd consider them closer to the support type than anything else. Um, support less in the way that like a, 
you know, a healer would heal you, and more in the fact that it's kind of going to be bolstering up you and your allies. You're going to have uh, some, like, subclasses have a turret that fights with you, so the turret can, you know, kind of get some people away from your tank or from your squishy guys. It's it's definitely a weird class uh, compared to some of the other ones. It's not your typical D&D fantasy class. Yeah, I mean, if you're the type of person that likes to buff things up that either aren't people or they're just items like this is going to be buff. a class for you yeah. he's bringing Arnold Arnold Schwarzenegger might be an artificer biggest fan of the dungeon crawl biggest fan of the dungeon crawl if you didn't know he actually recorded our intro that's actually his voice just really well no. reorganized and mixed down Ryan's a master at that um, these guys aren't the best with a wide variety of weapons so if mm. weapon specialty is your thing this isn't going to be what you want to do they've got an average amount of strength and health it's again they're not specialists in those sorts of areas yeah. making things that are specialists in those areas is what they, they do can craft a lot of magical items so if you want to start making magic items or you want to you know maybe you're a, a tradesman you want to start selling them this could be fun kind of rp uh if you're making a, this kind of goes back to if you're making your first character and you want you decide hey artificer sounds like something for me you want to make sure your intelligence is high they're intelligence-based kind of casters. Uh, it's I, I say it with asterisks, casters, because you're very much like applying these spells to your yeah. creations. The thing that improves their uh, potency of the stuff they do is modified mm -hmm. by the intelligence that they have, which every class, as you'll find later on, kind of has their area of expertise or specialty that helps them do things better. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, artificers, they get a lot of things. Most of it, Ryan has already mentioned, making a homunculus, making a guy that does things for you. Um, the cool thing I like about these that would draw me to it is being able to sell stuff. Yep. Because getting money is very difficult. And if Especially you're able to make levels. magical, oh my gosh, yeah. So this can be a really, really unique way to tackle stuff. You want to make a merchant-based character for this. Um, they also do get the option for thieves tools as well, yep. if you feel like stealing things and equipment there's there's so many ways you can go uh to role play this as well so this sounds like something you'd like you got to pick up tasha's cauldron of everything or you can just pick up ebron if you already have it i would recommend to get tasha's instead though because it does include an extra subclass i believe or find yourself a friend who loves D, &D beyond get into a campaign with them on there they can explain that mechanic to you and this is entirely okay this is legal mm -hmm. it is a feature of the site they can share their content with you for you to use universally on D, &D beyond yeah. as if they were letting you read their player's handbook or something so that can be a great way for you guys to jump in as well so that's All the right. artificer man that's how we're going mm -hmm. okay does that mean a barbarian they are and i will say uh technically be coming up in the next couple but we're not going to be doing the blood hunter as it is a very specific um, critical role themed class, uh, it's I, I, it might be is that in, official. It's I don't know if it's in Wild Mount. I'm not positive. I don't think it is. Uh, I could be wrong, but it's uh, in D and D Beyond. If you really want to use it, you can just go head over to D and Beyond D and D Beyond and play it for free. I want to say. So if you're super yeah, interested in it, you love critical role, you love Matthew Mercer, then you can go check it out. He's got some interesting spells if you want to see what he's made we uh, have done a couple of episodes on spells as of late especially the ninth level tier list one has two of his so go ahead and check those out but for barbarian the barbarian you might get a pretty good idea as to what this is just by hearing the name when you think of barbarian mm -hmm. you think of somebody who's strong wild kind of maybe punches things really well or goes a little crazy on the battlefield they're barbaric they're from the wild or something right. like that and if you thought those things you'd probably be right and if that interests you jump into the barbarian because these guys have rage they have an effect where they essentially do like an ultimate in battle if you like having a status in games where you are extremely strong for a limited period of time this could be a play style that mm -hmm. you like forcing you to keep attacking or to take. if you don't attack or take damage then the rage fades yep it's super unique and can kind of give you a fun spin whenever you're in the battling part of dungeons and dragons or if there's another barbarian but for now we're talking about 5e so they also have a lot of health 
they have a higher hit die mm -hmm. in constitution. Usually you want to build constitution around these guys. You don't have to. Uh, so they'll accumulate more health throughout the game. If you like having health, it's a good way to go. Uh, strength is another stat that you're going to dump stuff into. They don't normally cast spells unless you do a multi-class. So there's, there's no um, forbearance on being able to cast a strong spell. But if you're going to wield a big weapon for these guys, strength of if course. If you're making a, a berserk-themed character, your guts kind of guy, this is uh, this is the person for you'd probably be thinking of. Just going into a blind rage, whipping out your gigantic greatsword and going to town. Uh, you're also unarmored, which is a kind of a unique fighting mechanic of these characters. Um, for these, this class, all the other ones, you know, are proficient at least in some armor. This barbarian is completely bare bones, just wearing. The idea behind it is the you know, the RP and the lore is that they are kind of from tribes and from uh, you know, different places that build around uh, primal nature. And uh, you're wearing you're you're wearing clothes. You're not just naked. I guess you don't have to. You could you could be naked in, right. in you could, theory. You could in theory be naked. Um, or your rage state is returning back to your primal roots and ripping your clothes off. That could be cool. Yeah, you're going into Hulk mode. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you got the unarmored defense, which if you're not wearing armor, then your your armor class is your it's 10 plus your dex mod and then plus your con modifier, which get, goes to you want to have a high constitution and a very high strength for this character. I'd honestly, I'd almost say you want a higher con than you do a strength because I think this character, it's a tough because it's almost like you could, in theory, play it like a tank. Um, though there are definitely probably better tank classes. It's definitely catered to more damage, but you can easily just get more damage from a better weapon or from, you know, other abilities down the line. Uh, I think having a high con is very good because as I just said, it ties directly into your AC and that's the only way your AC would change for the whole game. Your constitution your dexterity ties into your AC. Yeah. You silly but boy. You don't want to hide dex with a barbarian. No. Exactly. You have big meaty fingers. You can't do tiny See, big you things. See, want, <laughs> you want to focus on a high con, and you can, obviously your deck sets play into it, but I'd say you probably, if you're rolling like a 12 for stats for, for, for decks, sure, toss it in there. You don't, you're not going to want to pick one of your high stats for dexterity for sure. Absolutely. And uh, if you're wanting to shy away from um, classes that cast spells because the spell system intimidates you, and it is confusing when you start. It's obtuse and hard to use at first. A lot of this spells can be to a, pick from. Yeah. This can be a, a good way to go. It's very straightforward and very effective. If you end up getting bored of it, it's a great class to what is known as multi-class mix with something else. If you really did want to make a Berserk-style character, mixing Fighter and Barbarian would be exactly what you're looking for. And I, I will say, uh, Barbarians often get a bad rep because I think they're confused to think you know they are easy to play but don't take that the wrong way and think that there's not a lot of choices for you to do in combat some of these uh, subclasses which are after you choose your class at third level you choose a subclass and it kind of expands some of your features some of these subclasses for barbarian are very cool and add lots of different thoughts oh and my features yeah into one it. of my favorite subclasses in the entire game is for barbarian it's in tasha's definitely check it out it's so cool yeah I know Ryan's, I don't remember if you didn't like it or not, but that's what we're okay. talking about. We're not talking about subclasses today. That's it's like the feral a feral or something. Something like that. Uh, these guys are a lot of fun, and you've got a lot of power on the battlefield. One of my favorite player characters that I've I've played with is uh, was known as Thuldel, and she was a barbarian. And always, whenever I she was in the fight, and whenever she started raging, I was like, we're good. We're safe. <laughs> I can trust this person. I'll hide behind her. Uh -huh. It'll be okay. Barbarians <laughs> so if you can be like pump that, out damage, man. Mm -hmm. tanks aren't plentiful in this game uh which if you don't have a tank on your team you you probably want some sort of support and the class that's up up next can do that but they can also do yep. a, a lot of a lot of things they confuse me often ryan so the, so he, he's alluding to the the bar <laughs> is up next yes uh these guys are you know initial thoughts when you hear bar is probably you know the seducer the guy that's just going to the bars and, you know. The bar. <laughs> okay. Go, move, and getting move, all the ladies who are all the dudes just having lots and lots of sexual relations. Seducing the <laughs> creatures. Don't don't further no, set I'm saying in that's the cliche, what Ryan. Pe that's what people think of the bard, but it's not <laughs> true is what I'm saying. It's not true. Well, it could be if you wanted to. Sure, it could be, but it's, it's not what the <laughs> class is about, right? 
The class is about you having an instrument or having some sort of talent. Uh, you can tell really good stories. You can uh, sing really well. You can play a, a lute very well. And through these, this art, this skill that you have, you're able to produce magic. With that said, uh, you don't have to actually play an instrument or sing well or be able to tell funny jokes. You, know, you don't have to do these things to play a bard. If you just want to play the bard and say, I cast this spell, I do this, then by all means, do that too. Yeah. Well, an another few things that you could do is there are some flavoring subclasses and uh, what are known as, I think, schools for them. That's Colleges. what their subclasses are. Colleges. Go to college again. If you're a college student, this is for you. Uh, the bards specifically can also be, like Ryan said, gifted in words. You don't have to um, really extend your, uh, I guess, bravery, your IRL charisma to try to do it. But if yeah. you are like musically inclined or you get a group of people together that can sing, that enjoy music, that are uh, pretty, how, how do you say, I don't know, extroverted, I guess, this could be a really great class for you because it's a fun way to stretch your chops, sure. make sure that your friends do like your singing and like your playing because if you do it in game, you know, you don't want them getting annoyed with you. But for these guys, moving on to more of the mechanics well, side of things. Before you get on to the mechanics, I do want to okay. say, because Braxton said that, and I also kind of said that as well as the opposite. I, I, I've seen a lot of people who want to pick the bard, but get intimidated thinking that they have to be funny. They have to, you know, do these things. And they're like, ah, you don't have to. You don't have to. It's it's somewhat to anything else in D&D, &D, any other RP that you're doing, role playing that you're doing. It doesn't have to necessarily be completely acted. You could just say, I'm a bard, I get up on stage and I play with my harp or something. You know, you don't have to actually act it out. You could say, I tell a funny joke, yada, yada, spell is cast. Yeah, precisely. In a campaign that's on hold that I run uh, at least a while ago, uh, I have a character that did exactly this. Even the, the character themselves was mute uh, and they would either type in Discord or out of character say, I play a song that sounds like I don't know, this thing from this soundtrack on an anime, and we all understand exactly what's going on. It's very fun, very engaging. All right, so um, onto the boring parts of things for some of you, the exciting part of thing for some of you. These guys obviously want to have higher charisma. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be the, the chonkiest chonker unless you just felt like doing that. Uh, again, it's a good thing to note that you're not restricted in how you build these characters at all. But the general recommendation is that you stack stuff into charisma, yeah, it's and like cast again, charisma. Spells. Yeah, to cast your spells, which makes them more powerful. Um, but again, charisma isn't just like, "Hey, how you doing?" It's it's not that that kind of thing. It's it's how you move, your influence on people, your kind of aura. Um, so that's fairly much it. They're you not. You don't have to have a high charisma in real life to, to play, have a high charisma character. I've had players. Have asked me, you know, I, you know, or like, or they, they'll say something, and say, yeah, I say that more charismatically though, because <laughs> I don't have that yeah. sort of charisma, and that's that's completely okay too. These guys, the interesting thing about Bard for me is that they kind of straddle a line between supporty, kind of a buff debuff kind of character, as well as the one who's really has a lot of utility outside of combat too. So I, I, I guess I'd class if put them inside the support area but they can i mean they can deal out some damage and set up uh the you know other players for success They're definitely the kind of i'm gonna buff up i'm gonna bring up my player my friend to set them up for success with they have bardic inspirations which means you give someone a d4 or i think actually i think it starts at d6 uh um and it slowly gets better and this means they can roll this dice at a later date to improve a hit or to improve a uh spell save or something along those lines so it's very much helping your buddies yeah um i had a thing i wanted to say for these guys but it completely slipped my mind because i need to admit i woke up a little while ago i fixed my sleep schedule and now i'm feeling tired at normal times of the day and it's 10 29 p.m and i'm officially becoming an old man oh, no. bards would hate me yeah i would ruin the party but again, um, there it is. It's in my brain. Enabler is a good way to describe this sure. class or sub DPS if you want to throw in some like Genshin Impact terms in there because I've been playing that game a lot. That's all he plays. Uh, 
Yeah. So, without further ado, closing the bard's tale here and moving on to what could be depicted as a old fart who s studies the church and the clergy. And it, but, but I'm just kidding. You don't have to go with the stereotypical thing for the cleric. They can do a lot more than what you would expect the name to do, Ryan. Isn't that right? Yes, but do they have to follow a deity? No. Yes. Yeah, they do get no. their power from yeah. their deity. So you have to do that. You do have but do you, to. You do have to follow that. their tenets, not necessarily. We'll get into that class later. Yeah, you don't have to follow a very clear cut thing. You just have a general faith. Uh, this god that you follow has a big part in your life most of the time, and actively bequeaths you gifts, your magic. All the spellcasters, you'll notice. Uh, outside of the bard, really, the bard still kind of gets their own magic from their own artistic sense and their yeah. school. For the cleric specifically, their god is giving them a gift, and we'll explain the differences later. Right, you're right now. Say, like, okay, yeah, of course. Now let's say you have you've had a bad experience with religion in your life, or you're a very devout atheist. I don't know. That's probably not, that's probably not the correct word choice to use. For I a, like the word choice. A devout atheist. Um. Does that mean you, you, you can't play this class? I, no, of course you can. It's, it's, it's very different than, you know, probably what you would imagine a typical religion to be. For all you know, you know, talk to your DM, of course. For all you know, gods might not even be playing a big role in your world that you're playing in. So figure out how that plays into it. I think it is kind of a fun RP dynamic to be dealing with these gods that exist way up there. And maybe you have a really close relationship with your deity. Maybe you don't. And you're kind of at odds with it. But... Regardless, this is definitely the support-based class that gets, you know, you don't have to be a good cleric either. There are bad clerics. There's the you know, yeah. death There's domain even some classes. cleric. E precisely. And those are those can be pretty powerful, especially mixed with other stuff. Um, yeah. For clerics in regards to gods as well, like kind of piggybacking off of that, uh, gods in D&D &D can be the traditional sense like we've got right now. Like there's one that's um, created something and they're the one god um monotheistic uh religion stuff like that but more often it's it's stylized after there's a god of of courage of luck of adventure of the sun of spring uh and it's less like this one god created everything there it could be like that but uh, there's a lot of variety for you to choose so if you're interested in having some sort of um idea that you strongly believe in and, and want to support um the goddess of of life of of death even of knowledge you can do love that. yeah Talk so to your DM. Uh, figure out what I, gods and goddesses are in the, your world and pick one that you align with these guys um wisdom generally is what you're wanting to, to stick with and, and wisdom is the um you can consider it street smarts or the root word wise to be wise and just kind of understand how the world works on yeah. a spiritual level rather than mental and in, in a sense like that but don't be fooled while these guys can do a lot of healing they have access to some of the strongest damage dealing spells in the game surprised me one of the times uh one of my fellow players i think killed a monster and they did a massive amount of damage and i was like i didn't know you could do that and they're the type of person that like they won't turn on you when things are, are going against their way, but they can threaten you. And, you know, like, like this, Raxton, this isn't, we shouldn't do this thing. This is dangerous. And you're going to danger everybody in the entire party. I, I can stop you. I'm like, okay. Okay. They're if the trusted playing, person in a party. If you're playing the cleric in a more, you know, supporty sense, you definitely want to have constitution as your second highest stat, as that's the way you get all your, you know, your health. And you want to have a high health if you're, not really doing great in combat. This will at least keep you alive longer. You can heal your friends, heal your buddies, heal the more squishy type characters. Or you can go the fun route. Uh -huh. Trust in your party. Has, have constitution be your dump stat. Sure. Just assume you're never going to get hit and min max. If you're, like, if you're like me, that's how I would do it. I'd probably die. Right. But if you've got a, a bunch of people who are, are typically like playing video games with you and you want to be like the mercy type of character from Overwatch and you want to be the squishy little healer that um, really, really is a potent sort of support, 
Uh, this is also play style that but you can do. they are unique in the fact they have a high AC because you can wear heavy armor. Yeah, because they don't have to run around a bunch. They can stand there and be like, you will be healed. Yeah. And there's even um, life transfer spells as well. There's a lot of unique things. Um, oftentimes people think, how many different ways can you heal somebody? There's a lot. Yeah. They have their... their and, I was just going to say their mechanic that they're kind of known for is their divine domains uh, and the uh, channel divinity. Each domain that you choose has a very specific channel divinity feature that you kind of want to keep in mind. And as Braxton saw firsthand recently, uh, they have a feature called Divine Intervention that <laughs> basically it's almost like a mini wish spell without bad consequences because you ask your god for something and if you roll really well, that it's god will help chance. you. It's 10 percent chance at 10th level when you get it. It grows by 1% yeah. every level. Or is it 10? Uh, I don't know. I'm like, I think it's 10. One of the two. Once you, and then once you hit 20th level, it just, it happens. Yep. All right. So don't be bored with those guys. Um, and if, if the last three were too simple for you and you want it, I would say a challenge of a character to play as. I would consider the druid okay. one of those. Respect. Respect. Uh, they're not, nothing in this game is overly complicated but druids are they have a lot going on with them they're able to transform into monsters so you need right then and there to know uh, monsters from the game and how they work with something known as challenge rating because you're only able to do a certain level of monster based off of that they have access to a lot of spells. The way they use spells in this game is a bit more complicated, and they have access to more than the usual class. Uh, clerics are different. We didn't mention that, but they also have access to every spell a cleric can cast. So if that seems overwhelming to you, maybe steer away from it. Um, for druids, these are very much exactly what you would think of them as people of nature, of something known as the Fey Wild. Tree which huggers. is kind of the yeah, tree huggers, wild magic, mystic things, fairies, pixies, um, hags come from here as well. So I think they're extremely interesting and often they have one of the highest skill ceilings and yeah. power levels in the game. They're kind of Ryan a mix tells about them. depending on which subclass you choose. They're kind of a mix between either a supporty or a damage dealer. They can get... They, it's similar if you played World of Warcraft, kids. The druid class in there also, either depending on which way you go, can be very much a healer, support class, or the exact opposite, and just you morph into creatures and you go in straight into the front lines and do a bunch of heavy damage. It sounds really straightforward up front, but when you get into the mechanics of D&D, &D, which we won't hear, uh, it gets... A lot. You have so much at your fingertips yeah, here. A lot so of you, options. If you want to start as a druid, and you can make it simple in the beginning, you absolutely can and grow with it. This is a great way to help you understand monsters in D and D. If you want to learn the mechanics quicker, this will force you to do that. Um, but don't be afraid of it. It's very palatable, and if you've got a DM that can help you understand it as well, you'll be good to go. Put your for these guys, high. I don't know if we mentioned that. Which what? Put your wisdom high for your spells. That they're wisdom based yes. class. Wisdom and intelligence. You can use intelligence well here um, as well if you would like to. For for RP stuff, um, they tend to be in that really middle ground where they don't use weapons and they're not athletic um, in the stereotypic sense. Again, you don't have to go with that sort of thing. But like Ryan said, wisdom is what you want higher because directly is that what is giving you your spells. The cleric gets their magic from the gods, are blessed upon them because they prayed really hard once upon a time in their life. The druid hugged a lot of trees and squeezed the magic juice out of them. You can and that's how they give their stuff. You can almost see it in a cleric y kind of sense, too, because if there's a god of nature, then maybe they are, have a close relationship with this god or goddess of nature. Absolutely, which I think is really cool. And there's some pretty amazing subclasses here, ways you can go with it. I think if I were to make another character, this would be a pretty top contender for something I'd want to do as somebody who's played a good bit of D&D &D and wants a lot of variety. All right. All right. If you don't want any variety at all because you're really boring <laughs> oh, no. and you hate interesting things, I'm entirely kidding. The fighter's up next, and you probably got that sense when you heard the name, right? But that's really not the case, right? 
Uh, well, this is the one that I think also gets another bad rep from me, especially. I was bored when I first heard of the fighter. They don't seem very interesting, but they're kind of the catch all class for melee weapons. If it doesn't yeah. fall into a barbarian or, you know, paladin, whatever, then this is the one that you can literally kind of focus your character down a certain. If you want to be a, uh, uh, what's they called? Archery person. You might think I want to be a ranger. Wrong. You probably actually want to be a fighter. Um, that's it, such a sad, sad <laughs> statement. Well, I hate that. We'll, we'll talk about it later. The ranger is built differently than how you would expect it to be. Uh, the fighter is definitely kind of uh, the catch-all, jack-of-all-trades for any type of weapon. And you can build Arms, it. blades, claymores, mm -hmm. etc. And you build it Everything. there with the kind of the extra stuff. The subclasses help as well as the kind of the fighting styles that you can choose. Yeah. So that's the way they add depth to it, in addition to trying to get your strength or dexterity up, depending on what type of weapon you're using. So pay attention to that as well. Uh, each weapon has a different way that you hold it, the way that you use it in battle, and strength or dexterity dictates mm -hmm. uh, your capability in that fighting style. It very much, say. and where your stats go, very much depends on which weapon you want to be specializing in. If you want to go the archery route, you want to have a higher dex and strength. If you're going for melee stuff, I guess a good way to think about it, if you're doing anything melee related, probably want to have strength. There's a few caveats there. Um, definitely check on the weapon before you decide for sure. If you're going range stuff uh, or if you, if you think about things that are more dexterous, uh, if they have the finesse option on the weapon, then you could just pump into dexterity. Um, and then you probably want to have your secondary be constitution because you'll odds are be in the front lines with this guy. You can kind of think of this class as well if you're going to mix with a lot of stuff as a what is known as a quality build in Dark Souls or mm. everybody's first playthrough where you're like, I want to try using every weapon and they all generally need strength or dex, so I'm going to level them evenly and I, I don't want to sure. die instantly, so I'm going to get health and wear some decent armor. Uh, these guys really like literally says a master of martial combat. And my first thing that when I heard it was like, oh, it's going to be a sword and shield, right? And that's it. Every fighter in every game I've heard is just that kind of guy so it's interesting like i would th i think the branding quote unquote for this class is is misleading sure. and they really can be a master in combat doing a lot of different attacks per turn um it's almost as if for as many spells as a spell caster has in their book in their brain in their deity the fighter has maneuvers ways to slash and move their weapon, things that they can use, tools at their disposal. But that's not all, Braxton. If you want to cast spells, right, but you don't want the overwhelming of, oh my god, there's so many spells to choose from, then there's a couple subclasses in the fighter that you could definitely pick that give you a couple spells or similar type abilities like spells. Uh, Eldritch Knight's the first one that pops into my head. They give you a few magic abilities here and there, uh, things that aren't too overwhelming, so it might be a good way to slowly get into the magic area if you're interested in it or or mm -hmm. you could just play a hexblade warlock and pick whatever wait wait, wait that's like a oh, oh, list. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa. moving on it's the best option i'm telling you fighter is also one of the most mixed classes with other classes for you if you if you want to consider that as well it's also correct me if i'm wrong brax you might actually might you might not know this um I probably but don't. i think according to DD beyond fighter is the most played class yes yeah the human fighter is by far the most played class and race of all the DD options i think Baldur's gate three the devs made fun of everybody who made a character they aggregated all of the uh, character creation that people picked and chose the average sum of all of everything that people picked mm -hmm. class race look and it was the most average looking dude that was a human fighter and they're like we give you horns and purple skin and you do this yeah you do this i mean it's a it's, very it's if fun. you think about D D power fantasy-esque type stuff. They want to play themselves. They just want to pick up the, the human fighter guy going to town, so. Spread spread tabletop RPGs to your friends who don't play and get it. Let's get more of a variety. That being said, though, if, if, you, if you don't, you know, don't take that the wrong way and decide, hey, okay, I wanted to play a fighter, but now I don't. If you're still interested in playing a fighter, definitely go do it. There's some cool stuff in there for you. If you don't want to play a fighter, you can play Fighter 2.0. Uh, Monk. The, the monk 
the monk. I mean, it's it's more of a specialist, and you can think of them more yeah. as a martial artist here, the monk that is. Uh, somebody who's studied in a monastery for ages, and they're finally, sure. they've they've met their quota of sitting under a waterfall for X amount of minutes, and they're going on their adventure, and they've got their trusty staff by their side, and their Dragon Ball branded key points. What are those? Ooh, that's, it's, that's tough, man. Key points is where the monk gets real confusing. I would not recommend a monk for a first character, um, but if you're really gung-ho, well, you're cool. maybe. If you're really gung-ho and want to try it out, the key points is where is where you want to spend most of your time understanding what they do because it can really bog down combat and gameplay if you are not. If you're really confused with what these key points are, then you'll be sitting there in the middle of your turn not knowing what you're doing. Yeah, it's uh, key, and again, that's spelled K-I, uh, is life energy, yeah. I would say. It's by finding inner peace or inner strength or inner whatever you want to tag word on in there. And it gives you the power to do superhuman feats to to shoot energy beams from your... Okay, there's some subclasses that do that. But just to fight better and to bolster yourself or sometimes other people, I think, they can do. These guys do have a little bit of support in them, right? Yeah, I don't know if we mentioned that for the fighter, but it, the fighter can technically be a tank or a damage dealer. Of course. Uh, uh, monk, the monk is dexterous i would say yes monk is much more of a straight up damage healer with a touch of support in there I, there's not a single class there's that I would say is focused in a different direction um yeah. some have a little bit more support than others but in the long run you're going to be wanting to do damage to things mm -hmm. and an example of how you can use these key points or they're not really skill points just resources you think of them as uh you can use them to immediately after you do an action you you whack with something uh you're able to whack with or punch and then do two more unarmed strikes again it allows you to do multiple things per turn because you're dexterous and focused and your key allows you to just mm -hmm. eke out a little bit more time or you can use the key points to take the dodge action uh quicker rather than using a full action a big buff beefy thing yeah. that takes a lot of time to do you can do it in what's known as a bonus action so like a side thing, like squeezing more stuff in, in one. These guys, they're complicated. You got a lot at your disposal so they can slow down combat. Like Ryan said, as a beginner, if you're going to pick this, study up and make sure you're an expert in this area. I'm glad you said that, Braxton, because I kind of disagree with you the more I think about it. I know I said that originally. But he's taking I mean, a... you disagree with yourself? I, hang on, man. I do and what? I don't because the key points start off very small. You only get... You get zero at first level and two at second level. So there's only so much you can do. It's kind of a slow build up. Yeah. That being said, if you're doing a one shot and your DM's like, hey, it's your first time playing. You want to do a, a quick level five one shot with us? It might be a little nope. overwhelming. Same with spells. If you're choosing a, a ma magic class, it can be a little overwhelming to pick all the spells that you would get. Um, it's still a confusing class for first timers, but it's it's definitely not as confusing as, you know, you might be a little scared now to try out the monk for your first time, but it's not do it. terrible. No. If you wanna if you like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, if there's a subclass in there that you might be very interested in, to give that a check out. Ryan, you just wanted to throw me under the bus. I did. Well, I was gonna call back to what I said, but you just repeated it, so like perfect. You went, oh sh hell yeah, I can make him look bad now. You see this Great. cat blanket? Cat blanket. That's Cute. so perfect. Thanks, man. You Alex. know what else is Okay. Sorry. We're just, we're just busting. Yeah, you know, that's kind of works. Problems. These guys are big. They're beefy. They're strong. They run through the wall and they're like, bam, I'm here. I'm cool. I followed this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. You see that on my resume. This is, I've got a god. They want me to do something. Yeah. Uh, by golly, I will do it. So it's for Braxton, these guys. Yeah, uh, mm. As Braxton alluded to there, these are clerics with a caveat. They have to follow a specific code of ethics, a code for their god. And if they break it, they will lose their abilities. So be mm. wary. Unless you decide to go a little bit step farther and there is a subclass for the uh, Oath yeah. Broken Paladin, which is definitely a, a route you could go. Um, and th the tenets aren't like super crazy and weird. It's not something no. you have to you know, pay attention to like crazy. It's just kind of a way to focus on your RP and to stick to what your god believes in. Yeah, this is the most stereotypic tank class slash off healer class yeah this is a tank with a dash of healing for sure yeah uh for the paladin uh a, a lot of contingency i see 
uh, with players online specifically is that there are rules for them in your role playing. D and D oftentimes is all about doing what you want to do. Rule of cool. Have a blast. Don't be restricted by rules if you don't like it. But for these guys, either follow what the player's handbook or a class that says you need to do this, this, and this. It's there for a reason. You do have to follow it. Or make your own list if you don't like what's there. Make your own god. If if you're really not a fan of what's presented to you, D&D, you can always change that. So if you want to be the person that's commanding control on the battlefield, you wave your finger and the enemies go that way because they can't get past you and they want to kill the other people or the high value target in your party, you control it. You're cool. You you cast big spells. You do a big thing called a smite and you smack it on somebody's head and they die in one hit. Mm-hmm. Divine smite does so much damage. It does a levels. lot. Like If you're the type of guy that wants to wield a massive hammer and smite them with the power of the god that is currently blessing you, mm-hmm. Do it. I strike you down. Strength and charisma for these boys. And dexterity and wisdom for the monk, I would say, as well. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we mentioned that. Yeah, this is definitely a charisma and a strength, or depending on what weapon you want, a dexterity. Yeah. Because I think uh, charisma is their spell casting. Yes. Right? And how... They're not like a full caster, right? Or do they just get a bunch of spells that they can do? Uh, I mean, yes and no. They're very limited um, amount of spells that they can cast. For example, at second level, they only have two spell slots. And then once you get to the full Mac Daddy 20th level, you still only have 15 spell slots total. So you don't have much Last as a paladin. and warlock. <laughs> you don't have much as a paladin. They only go up to, to spell level five. Um, yeah. But the ones that you're able to do are the type of stuff that you, you want to be. You probably honestly, when you spend most of your spell slots on just divine smiting things, uh, just you know, that's kind of like your catch-all attack. They're kind of with. one note, yeah. which is interesting. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Right. The general way that a lot of people lead into playing it uh, is very simple. So yeah. you mix it up. So um, we can skip over this one, right? You skip over it? Yeah. Nobody uh, wants to play it, right? Or they do, and then they play it, and they're stuck in a campaign where <laughs> everybody's doing a bunch of cool stuff, and they're killing people in one right. hit, and you're like, DM, I'm really bored, and my class is not fun. Can I change it? And hopefully they say yes. But it's often, if that's the case, what is a ranger? Hey, you've just won the double jeopardy. Oh, awesome. That's the class that we're talking about right now. I'm what sorry is if this is a ranger. Uh, That's a good question, Braxton. What I don't, is, I could not tell you. It's from D and D's perspective. R- ranger is the class that I'm most disappointed in. The one that I want so badly to be good. He's because, not angry. He's just disappointed. I know because I I love the idea of the you know the elf with the bow around their their chest they're sneaking through the woods they are tracking things they have a big bear next to them that's their that's their friend they're going to town they're shooting arrows they're tracking orcs that they hate you know they're going from point a to point b and then you get into playing it and it's very different um i don't even know where to start with these guys so they basically <laughs> they, they really are the uh dexterous kind of thing sneaky you know they, they're tossing arrows they're basically more or less stuck to be an archer. the guy class. that you meet on your adventure who whenever danger happens or they're tracking something they like get a fistful of dirt lick it and go that yeah. way mm-hmm. they're that they're that guy you know yeah so th- this class as braxton was saying has been worked on by wizard of the coast multiple times since the player's handbook was released and between you and me, uh, listeners, I don't think they've still nailed it down exactly. My favorite class. They're getting close. Yeah, my favorite class that they've released for this is in Unearthed Arcana, which means it's still on playtest. Released. <laughs> so it's. A- asterisks there. It's tough to recommend this class, but I, I would still say give it a shot if you're interested in it. Uh, if you only have the player's handbook and you want to do a Beastmaster where you have a companion with you, I very much recommend you don't do the one in there. They've done a few works, uh, workings of it since that I would say are a little bit better. The one in Tasha's is heading in the right direction. I would say if you really want to play a ranger and you like the idea of a Beastmaster type character, 
then do the Drake Warden, I think is what it was called. Yes. Uh, it's under their con. It's free material. So you just search it up and you'll find it. I think it's a very good. Yeah, well, you're stuck with having a Drake, but it's the best rendition of stuck with having I mean, a Drake. I mean, different than the Beastmaster where you get to have the any The Drake has the command really of all five elements. I, it is the Avatar Drake. But Nothing you, else in D&D can do that. But you can't have a bear that you or a, a lion that you ride around with. Well, yeah, I mean, that's so cool that it has to be balanced with the shittiest class in the game. Yeah. You know? Uh, for Ranger, um, Ryan alluded to it, but they literally get abilities or features that let them uh, be more proficient at tracking in certain areas, navigating through and certain, certain areas creatures. and certain creatures. Uh, so really, if you are very interested in playing this, this might be um, your first chance if you're feeling adventurous and your DM lets you to explore some alternative material because People have fixed this. People have worked on it. It's not official, but, you know, maybe let it be your first foray into the community of um, homebrew D&D. I think that's my recommendation for the Ranger class. If you really want to have a backstory where you've got a sacred enemy and anything of that creature type um, is you, you want to hunt it, you want to kill them like you're Aaron Yeager and you want to kill all the Titans, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's very true. Don't don't be scared there's somebody there's a resource out here that's very balanced that you can jump to yeah these guys are definitely the kind of the damagey supporty kind of guys they can cast some spells so dex wants to be probably your main uh stat and then wisdom which is their uh, spell casting modifier is going to be your secondary one uh, the spells they kind of can cast are some kind of you know aoe spells area of effect spells that will tie people down or they also have a few healing spells. They can cure wounds somebody. They kind of can do a little bit of everything. They can do pass out a trace, which gives everyone plus 10 to sneaking, which is very handy and very important. Almost worth playing a ranger just for that. There's a, you know, another class I can do it too, but this is going to be you know the main source of that type of stuff. Yeah. I think a lot of people will be drawn to this because of the most played play style in Bethesda games, which is the sneaky shooty. Yeah, that's true. The good old sneaky shooty, as I like. What I no matter what I do in those games, no matter what I do, if I'm like, I, I will never press the crouch button and I will sprint in with my greatsword, eventually I pick up a bow. Eventually I start crouching. It always turns into it. You so know I know people sneaky, are Braxton? Oh, I didn't even mean to make that transition. What what else? What else the right? rogue, baby. The raga. Rogue. rogue English. These, these guys are the masters of sneak. Thievery disguise pocket sand stuff like that you know pocket sand daggers pocket sand. daggers upon daggers on daggers inside of cloaks and darkness and mm. sneaky sneaky and that's that's not, rogue next one <laughs> no, no, just but they're, they're not just like that they can also there's a, a subclass that can cast a few spells kind of like they're called the arcane trickster so they can cast yeah less uh you know damagey type spells but more like illusion magic and enchantment magic to charm people and that type of stuff. And then you got the more specific, just straight damage dealer assassin guy that's just going to town, stabbing people with sneak attacks and fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Or making they, uh, disguises, all that fun stuff. I've got some things with the rogue class in general. Uh, to start, D&D &D doesn't deal well with... Um, things that are in video games like one shotting somebody no it that doesn't happen so if you're wanting to play a class if you're looking for that if that's what you've been waiting to, to hear about as a new player who knows nothing about D, D or these classes that's nearly impossible yeah, you unless can't just you like are sneak up to game. somebody and be like all right i'm gonna choke this guy out uh what you do get is often surprise rounds where your entire party might get a chance or just or just you to do a full round of attack without the enemy getting any turns, uh, you can get a, a, an extra hit or you can guarantee that you're going to land a critical hit, which either doubles your damage die uh, or just doubles the number that you roll right outright. There is no, I stab the guy in the forehead and he instantly goes catatonic. And it's Sometimes you can do a lot of damage with a sneak attack critical, like from an assassin or something. So sometimes it will insta-kill, but not all the time. Not all the time, especially late game. And uh, something with Arcane Trickster I want to talk about. 
there are, if you're wanting to play a magical rogue, that class is hard to build effectively, I will say. They're really cool, but I did a, and this, this could be either on me or, or the bird. I think I might have given them a spell, so it's probably on me. Um, we were playing a one-shot, rather high level, and I gave them a bunch of fun spells, but during combat, they couldn't do much. Uh, versus the paladin Ryan was playing. He's like, divine smite, bam, divine smite, bam. Mm -hmm. And people are just dying left and right, and they were really bored. So uh, the, the rogue was really bored. So they can, compared to the other classes, feel ineffective, but this is for the type of player that wants to have fun building something. The tools mm -hmm. are there, and the resources, skills, and effects are there to make this a really strong and potent class. You often uh, get the course, ball tossed yeah. into your court for you know sneaking things if your party wants to see what's up ahead they don't want to just toss everyone in and you'll just roll a stealth check and sneak your way in and you're now in complete control of the the session and you're dictating what's going on that can be a lot of fun to get the spotlight on you on you as a player for a little bit um you want to have a high dex we already mentioned mm -hmm. for a lot of the dexterity stuff uh if you're going the arcane trickster route you want to pump a little bit of stuff into intelligence just so you can have mm -hmm. some a little bit of higher dc they're crafty you want to be able to figure things out basically yeah don't be an idiot don't be i mean you could dumb dumb thief is is fun. a fun thing to do it could be fun um all right so a class that i've been interested in but i'm also for the same reason as the very last one on this list skeptical because it seems boring to me really but i know a lot of people are hot for this kind of stuff sorry i had a little bit of a thing brewing in my stomach was yes. it was it was it gas from the food i had earlier or was it my innate magical ability that what? came into me when i was born i don't know or am i a sorcerer now wow i think, I think you might be man dang so I have a wellspring of magic that was brewing inside. It's not just simple human gas. Mm -hmm. uh, these inside guys are, <laughs> they're, the, they're the chosen one. They're the one that was gifted with some sort of crazy magical power because some uh, otherworldly being or crazy strong wizard or ancient dragon said, that person, that them, they're getting my gifts. You were it's, not a, it's, it's not a religion. It's you're the dragon born uh, type of a situation, the chosen one. It doesn't have to be literally written that way, but it's an innate ability that you draw from a wellspring of uh, power in the side of you. It's it's the sort of like in an anime where it's like, how does this work? Magic. Which means, it's, it's of that. course, your magic ability is charisma. Doesn't make any sense, going, but is it there, is. is that yeah, I mean, why? Well, no, I get it. Because charisma is kind of your general aura, your will to impose on people. How, um, I don't know, imposing words and stuff. It's like very innate. It's sure. you as a person. And charisma kind of over intelligence, over wisdom. I feel like it fits that, you know? And for, for paladins as well, theirs was charisma, which... Makes sense. What, you're, what pleading, you you're pleading to your deity to give me power. Okay. <laughs> All right, I've been convinced, and now it makes sense. Uh, the source was a bit of a stretch, but it, it could be understood. So um, these guys, the way they cast spells uh, is the most spell slot focused in this. They, they get a bunch of spells, and they even get this really cool ability that allows them to alter spells. So it's um, sorcery points, and you can do things, the kind of like instants in Magic the Gathering, if you've played that, uh, where... Yeah, where um, you cast a spell twice instead of once, or yes, yeah, that's the most useful one. You, that's kinda, you break the rules of typical D and D magic. You can create like, your I'm own so spell strong. slot by destroying another spell slot, or by using uh, sorcery points. Sorry to uh, create a new level of spell. It's the monk of magic. People, they have sorcery points that allow them to further enhance oh, their yeah. magical abilities whereas the monk was often physical abilities it's very true uh, they're v <laughs> this is the first class on this list that is extremely squishy they have the lowest amount of health per level that they gain so be careful this is your this can be your glass cannon 
Or Make sure you have some trusty partners. You can pump some constitution in there as your secondary stat. Oh, but you're not min maxing, Ryan. Uh, what else would you pump uh, it into? You don't, you don't, I'm just kidding. You don't have to do it. Do, I don't. Uh, what would be your secondary stat if charisma's your highest? Dexterity for initiative. You're not wrong. You go first that is, in that combat. That is nice, but. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So you got your charisma, you got your dexterity, and then everything else will be. Oh, lit, wait. What does it say here? Constitution, charisma. Okay. Player's handbook. All right. You don't want to min-max. You don't want to make the strongest character, the strongest sorcerer this side of wherever the hell you're playing in. Fine. Go for it. It's okay. It's whatever. What's also for your saving throws? Yeah, that's very true. That, that, would, that would help. And don't forget, those those stats lead into uh, the out-of-combat stuff, like being able to tell if uh, somebody's got like a bad vibe about them, and they're like, that. you were kind of like winking. At your friend over there, I'm going to do a wisdom check on them to see if, like, that seemed kind of hammy or what, what are they doing or, like, other, other sorts of things, you know? Um, they get access to some of the most powerful spells in the game. The class later down the line gets more. They also these guys, like, get access to some of the craziest magic, period, in the game because they yeah. have, if you're going this route of the wild magic sorcerer, you literally just roll a D100 and whatever effect pops in there is what effect happens. And there are some pretty crazy, yeah. swingy, fun effects in there for the RNG class if you want to go that route. Yeah. Again, if you're the type of person that always picks the um, really high attack magic user, that's these guys. Or the ones that are most skilled at manipulating mm -hmm. magic itself. Uh, class later on is just vast amounts of magic this one is control of it because yeah. you literally are a magical being definitely it focused is inside the of you damage dps side of stuff or just get fireball you can think good. in the controly side of stuff if you're casting more like hold monster and hold people spells there's a really cool new subclass for you guys and tasha's if you like eldritch stuff or farm realms if you know what that is hp lovecraft kind of things Tentacles? Speaking of tentacles, man. Up tentacles. to the worst class on the list, kids. You know, I wouldn't argue with you. But I will argue with you. Yeah. It's one of the most fun classes. This is... Um, I want to say that this is the make-your-own-class class. In a sense. And I'll yeah. explain that first, starting off and saying... Um, this is the opposite of the Paladin in sense that it is the most mixed uh, caster in the game. Uh, Paladin is mostly mostly strength focused with some spells. Warlock is um, like a fighter that has more spells that they can do. It's not like a big tanky guy. This is somebody who gets their magic from a, a pact with some sort of crazy dude, devil, unspeakable entity out in the forms of the folds of space that nobody knows what the hell is going on things like that if you want to have a contract that binds you to something you're forced paladin chooses their god they they want to follow these tenets a warlock's patron tells them what to do manipulates them forces them to do things for them in order to receive these items you, you don't often get necessarily have to have an, a relationship with no. this uh pact person no. Uh, I, I would say it makes it more fun, but the DM doesn't necessarily, or you, if you say, I don't really, you know, I just get my power from this guy, just leeching off of him. That's totally okay, too. Yeah. These are um, what I would like to call, like, the, in anime, you've got the chunibyo, the, the basically, like, eighth grader syndrome thing with, the, like, the, oh, the magic in my right hand, it's too strong, oh, the darkness, like, that kind of guy. It can be. You don't have to, but often it's the, it's the troubled past person, the the cursed, the guy who's... Have, I'm, I'm going to stop him. Okay, Warlock, if you want to have some spells, literally like one or two that you can cast every between naps, you can you can do that. That's really you, cool. You want. It is really cool. Um, you're able to pick some subclasses where you can be actually really, really great with weapons. Um, there's, a, there's a class known as the Hexblade that I play as, and it's basically like a pseudo-fighter. Um, throughout levels you get no things known as invocations they're like plug and play class features every class we've mentioned has features that allow you them can to think of it if you play things. near automata the Ooh, little area where nice. you can like plug and play little chips and they each do different little things that's mm -hmm. what you think of it like 
there's a there's so much variety in this class and the only drawback is the limited amount of spells but that presents a certain strategy so if you're like somebody who wants to maximize you know that card that you play for the perfect turn in in a card based game and wait for the right moment this is the class for you uh and if you want to have a really colorful backstory and you want to have a tragic backstory this is also a great class for you to go with uh yeah. they do cast with charisma uh keep that as high as you can um and really something else uh for another substat you can do whatever the heck but wisdom kind of works because often these are the, the crazy guys who just have kind of an understanding of stuff true but i disagree i think your second stat should be constitution why braxton not for the health the concentration checks for the uh, hundreds of concentration spells that this warlock will be casting in a normal game. These guys are very limited in terms of quote unquote full casters. I would consider warlocks full casters. They have a very limited spell list compared to everybody else. A lot of those spells are things known as cons con concentration spells, where if you get hit, you got to roll one of those die that you've learned about for D and D. And if you roll below a certain number, that spell ends. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> your go-to uh, with this guy, and Braxton might disagree because he hardly ever uses it. But Eldritch Blast is your friend, and you are going to want to be casting Eldritch Blast a lot because it's yeah. technically a cantrip, and you can cast it over and over and over and over again, and it can do a good chunk of damage. So it don't forget about your Eldritch Blast. I would use it more if I wasn't a Hexblade. I right. love that spell. Um. I, I think these guys will give you the most unique experience you'll play in D&D. And you might actually hate that unique experience because it can feel limiting at times. Uh, or you might love it. I don't know. These, worth checking out. I, ooh, worth checking out for sure. Even just for the flavor. Even oh, the, the RP is so good with these. If you, <laughs> It's so good. He says that because I'm cutting we've myself had some off. cool RP moments with, uh, with the Lovecraftian beasts of his yeah. past cutting myself off because i could talk about it for a long time and i know i feel like there's more i need to say but uh, finally is the class um of the one that we did a couple of weeks ago we did a yeah. full episode on the wizard because we're planning on going in depth through all these guys and talking about them more so like this, yeah, this the sounds source, like your yeah, class right. then go for that well speaking of which really quick does warlock what do you think their role is in a party dps tank healer could be whatever you want um i feel not like healing, a warlock not healing, is a, not a healing for sure i think a warlock is um control sub dps they control the battlefield yeah. if they want and they can deal a lot of damage otherwise there's not a lot of healing uh and they can't they can tank but you it, it's just dumping into charisma is how you tank yeah i agree okay they're the, cra they're the crazy thing on the battlefield they're like the junk rat or something like that I don't know, you sure like what the what, what's going on Crazy so the crazy. wizard, if you like what we're about to say, and it seems interesting, then definitely go back and listen to our wizard episode a few episodes back. Definitely goes into this a little more in depth. Yeah. That being said, the wizard, I think, at least personally, if you think of fantasy, you're probably thinking of spells and wizardy type dudes immediately. This is that class through and through. This, yeah, this is the person that learns to use magic. Mm -hmm. They maybe weren't gifted innately later maybe their brother was just born with some sort of gift and you were jealous and you went to school and you learned really hard and you can cast everything that's the wizard it means you can find can other people's spell books and you can write yeah. down their spells into your spell. own spell book boom uh you want a high intelligence because they're smart Similar to the ranger, I would say this is one of the few classes where you could, if you have a lot of D and D knowledge, you can very easily kind of start metagaming because not really because you're you know metagaming outside the game, but because your character probably knows a lot of stuff about certain creatures and certain beasts and certain planes of existence. Might not be you know good for a first time player if you don't know a lot of stuff, but hey, if you're just uh, you're fresh out of the school, then maybe you don't know much. You slept through class. There's a there's a big um i guess like a warning for this class that i need to give you okay like a That's really fine, really big one this is the only class that allows you to have a really long fancy beard it's it there's literally a thing in the player's handbook that says this is the only class so if you have a beard <laughs> usually right i don't know about me. that one i'm just kidding but like this is your stereotypic like long beard gandalf mm -hmm. wait, wait would gandalf be a wizard or a sorcerer He'd probably be a sorcerer 
Probably a sorcerer. Magic or to study. I don't know. What would you think? This is a really important question. And you know, to be honest with you, I love Lord of the Rings, but I don't know his history. Did, what do you, he, like, did he learn magic or was he just gifted it? Well, he's, he, oh, I can't talk about spoilers. There's been situations where he just like has more magic because something happens. Well, he's just, so I, yeah. I feel like it would be a sorcerer. But, uh, well, he could just be like a Merlin type character where he just, he's really good at magic and has stuff at all moments of time. Probably, maybe know, he's, man. If you, you guys know, are he doesn't have to be with one or both. He can, do, he can do both. These guys are straightforward. Like Ryan said, you can find spells. You have a book that you've got. It's your resource for spells. This is where you've studied. It's your textbook. You paid a ton of money and you're in debt because you got it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, you can spend some time and some gold and put some spells in your, your book. You can keep casting them later. You want to have intelligence be really high because that's how you cast spells. Uh, I do love the flavor for them. Um, and they get access to not every spell. We said that once upon a time. They don't get access to every spell. But almost any time I've seen a spell that I was like, I want to use that. It goes, okay, sorry, you're warlock. You can't use it. But wizards, they can do that. It's really yeah. cool. It's very cool. That's pretty much it, yeah. right? I think I, yeah. I, I love the wizard. I recommend that if you really dig what we just said. It's not complicated. Then go listen to her. I mean, it's a little complicated because there's lots of spells and, you know, spell stuff. And spells can be a little complicated. But once you learn spells, once you finally take that plunge, they all kind of perform similarly. Just with their own little, yeah. you know, fun little doodads here and there. My recommendation for anybody starting out, uh, if the spell casting classes have drawn you at all, uh, I would almost just say I would, I would give you homework. And you need to spend an extra hour or two than the other people do that aren't playing spellcasters to read how spellcasting works for your class. Because when you sit down and you, you're like, I got this, I picked some spells, you're going to be like, I, well, how do spell slots work and what gets used when? You, you're going to need to sit down and, and mm -hmm. look at it. It's not intimidating, but it's not like we don't deal with that at all. Magic um, in video games takes care of it for us. Um, so it's new. Definitely, definitely look at that. That's my recommendation. All right. Those Did are classes, man. That's all the classes in Dungeons and Dragons. There's, of course, new ones that people have made if you want to explore those as whoa, well. Yeah, whoa. That's third party content. Yeah, that's, that's illegal. No, it's not. Don't do that. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not. Just it's talk to your DM, DM first, kids. Yeah. Um, things that are made outside of, of Wizards of the Coast, outside of traditional things where sources are, are held, where people of the community. Uh, of the official sense have have lived and that kind of leads us into some things that have happened this week that you know we might want to talk about if if ryan wants to bring us into the the area of this podcast sure. the scope the place bring us into it news in the dungeon crawl it's a little more jazzy that time around thanks man i'm down for it uh there have been some stuff some developments with D, D beyond lately where um people have left and if you play D, &D you might also play video games and that you see the reddit post blah 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 left um what's what's mass effect developers you see somebody leaves a video game bioware it is almost always bad news uh, because it means something's going wrong in there. Somebody's jumping shit because they don't like what's going on. Yeah, you can think uh, of sometimes Blizzard for that. Bad. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, Ryan, who left? Do you have it on hand? I can get it on hand. Oh, okay, because I don't have it on hand. So that was me trying to figure out just how to, how to get over to you. We had some... Uh, I'm sorry, but we had some of the pillars of D&D &D Beyond head out. And the initial reaction... Is that, is it okay? What's okay. going on? Got it. Who is it? So we got um, <clears throat> uh, James Hayek, who was the uh, writer Probably. for like, their articles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Lauren Urban, which I got to be honest, I don't know exactly what she did there. Uh, Adam Bradford, also don't know exactly what he did there. Might have been behind the scenes. It might have been in the forefront. I'm not positive. Um, and then Todd Kinrick, who did a lot of the videos that you would find on the YouTube channel. Uh, he Probably was like the, uh, yeah, he was the, the bald guy, the 
I was always there. Um, they all it's four, really animated. Yes, yeah, very animated. Yeah. Uh, all four of them left D and D Beyond uh, pretty back to back. Yeah, and that looks bad, right? And uh, at this point, uh, the day of the recording on Monday, he had an announcement to make, um, and I. I don't think I saw what it was, but I think they're working on their own project, their own resource uh, that they want to do. And that sounds bad, right? But you think about what D&D Beyond is, and it's an online library. It's not a video game with artistic um, details that are, uh, I guess, tied to those who create within that studio. For D&D Beyond, it is always going to be a library of, of resources for you to jump into. Uh, and I don't think people leaving is going to alter that. Yeah, so they left on good terms too. So uh, Todd Kinnerick, as I say that right, uh, he mm -hmm. uh, left and is now uh, the lead uh, creative manager at Idol Champions, uh, which is, is an officially licensed D and D strategy game. It's not under Wizards of the Coast, so he got hired by a different company. Um, it doesn't look it's like it's a free-to-play game doesn't look interesting to me but if you're interested in idol you hence the name idol right um the others i'm not positive um why they left but as braxton was kind of saying for something like this they all seem to be on positive terms with the other members of wizard of the coast still doesn't seem to be negative and the fact that they all left at once without anything negative being brought up leads me to believe that it's just that they were all hired at the same time and their contracts yeah. expired yeah, as, as somebody who works in their day job within hiring as a talent acquisition coordinator, oftentimes they might have just outgrown D&D &D Beyond. They are seeking more money because yeah. D&D Beyond is rather new and their budget could have not met what they were looking for. James Hayek, I know, expecting. makes D&D. &D, like he worked with Matthew Mercer to make Wild Mount. He helped with their other one too that wasn't officially Wizard of the Coast licensed. And... Uh, so he he's probably going to be getting more into that sphere of writing specific D and D content. Maybe you know not under Wizard of the Coast banner, but doing similar stuff. And Todd Kenrick, Todd Kenrick beforehand made YouTube videos for himself. So now he's getting back to that content creation stuff too. You know, I I don't think it's a bad thing. I think they're heading on to some greener pastures. I'm sure they'll have some great hirees that are doing cool D and D Beyond yeah. stuff still. So I, I think everything's still in a good place. Yeah, I don't think they were the big designers behind uh, how resources become available on D&D, pricings, etc. Those are the things that you would be worried about to change. And I don't believe they were a part of much of that. They wrote some of the creative content, which, I mean, it's fine if new writers come in. That's okay. But I don't believe anything's going to happen with D&D Beyond. I don't think it's going to change. Uh, it's not, again, like a video game company where it's like, basically the guy who wrote directed and made all of like halo or all of the mass effects is gone so now they're just remastering so it we do say i did double check uh adam bradford who did leave was one of the co-founders for D, D beyond yeah so it might be a red flag fuel but um he does say in his no. tweet that he is uh heading into a new adventure so it's also in the tabletop rpg sphere so maybe he just wants to get away from D D and do his own stuff who knows yeah i don't know if there's like D&D &D Beyond is pretty much at its final form, I would say, right now. It's going to continue yeah. to do its thing. Yeah. Wants to put its creative wings somewhere else, which is fine. All right. That's we just wanted to drop that kind of sad news on you guys after we talked about something kind of simple here. And we wanted to get it out there just to drop it in. And I don't like... For some reason, I can't remember how we do this thing. But if you want to tell us that we talked about... Uh, classes in a very terrible way like entirely think, and you want to sh i also think you said that exact same wording last week too well you know what if you don't want to do that you can say that you love us a lot that we're really cool rax is having reach out a lapse in memory lately every time he's like i don't remember how we do this i don't know what's going on with go you. ahead you okay you, what? No, no, you, you got it oh no, you got it man you got no, it okay you know what if you want to talk to us right now you can go on twitter and instagram at dungeon crawl pod and you can follow us and do whatever the heck you want i'm gonna be honest we don't post much there except for like updates that happen or if like things are on fire but we will but maybe we will in the future because yeah. this is the year of the dungeon crawl crawl uh if you want to talk to us in more long form of course you do have a n and email the dungeon crawl pod at gmail.com and as of late there's not 40 billion people in it 
but we do have a Discord where we've been talking more frequently, uh, especially today, uh, about interesting topics in D&D. Something I brought up was, um, do you think for people who are RP challenged, or he's got his blanket on, he's getting cozy, people right. that might be less likely to RP, do you think hiding dice rolls might uh, allow or train people to use RP a bit more? Obviously, the DM would see the dice roll, but since the other players don't see those dice... They have to look at the player to see the reaction of how they did it. Don't just say, I got a, like a 17, you know, but like mm -hmm. show it on your face, on your action. That's something we talked about. There's a bunch of other stuff that's going on there. Uh, we also have a YouTube. We do. If you listen to audio form, uh, if you search up the Dungeon Crawl podcast, it'll show up. We've got our video, our face and Ryan's face. And we're talking, we point at each other. And sometimes we have a visual cue for you to look at whenever we want. So jump over there. Uh, we also are working on live play stuff that's going on and keep an eye out for that. That's fun, Ryan. What if they really want to like help us? Like they want to give us a, like a footstool up in in the world. Uh, well, if you really want to help us, um, you can think about what I'm about to say. I'm gonna go in a little metaphor here. Whenever you're camping, right, Braxton, and you <laughs> hang on, hang on. Whenever you're camping, right, and you creating a fire to keep yourself warm, you toss. Yeah. A, what do you, you toss a piece of wood, right? Toss a piece of wood yeah. on top, on you top put of the a, fire. Put a cat blanket on, I guess. Uh, Is that works? Okay, no, sorry. Uh, forget I have a cat blanket on right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you you start the fire, and you got to fuel that fire, right? You got to fuel it. So you toss a little piece of wood onto the fire. Boom. I see where this is going. It, uh, it gets a little fiery. More fire. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sparks go flying. Now, if you want to fuel our podcast, if you want to drop some wood uh, if you want to drop something on, <laughs> if you want to drop something onto the podcast <laughs> you can go to apple podcasts find the dungeon crawl and rate us five stars and leave a little review and i'll tell you oh, every review you put down warms us up a little bit more actually it really does so, we've gotten a few more recently first... and I, I, wait we, what i know and we we appreciate them so keep them coming hop in our discord join into the community it's lots of fun lots of good people so uh we're happy to have you here you can hear more things more funny things like what uh you can you can continue to listen to us uh next week we'll likely have reached a milestone that we've been wanting to wanting to hit to and this should be our 75th episode which is kind of fun as well Woo! so look forward to that announcement next week it literally means nothing Except for, I'm just glad that people are listening to us with the very small amount of outreach that we do. It means you guys are just jumping in and you like like what we have to say. Yeah, uh, so nice. join the conversation. It is very nice. Come into the Discord. Uh, we watch anime weekly on Sundays. On a lot of the newly airing shows. A lot of places to discuss with people. And it's one of the friendliest Discords we've got that I've seen out there. And we don't know yet world. exactly what we're doing next week. But I will tell you the week after, if everything goes to plan... We will be doing a what's it called Mork Borg? Mork Borg. It's podcast. a metal album. It's D. It's it's tabletop uh -huh. RPG based off of a, a metal album. Yeah, that's about all we what? know about it. Um, our friend Kenneth will be coming onto the podcast and be explaining us this information and walking us through it for you as well, the viewer. So come on and uh, get hyped for that. If you, if you want to go ahead and research it yourself, go look up Mork Borg. I think I don't know if the Kickstarter is over. It probably is over by now. They had like an, uh, Imagine, a yeah. new expansion for it or something. So go check that out. And like the usual way that things are written in the universe, he's Ryan. He's Braxton. This has been the Dungeon Crawl. Thanks for crawling through the classes of the player handbook, player's handbook, and also nice. featuring artificial. You say that more often. Thanks for crawling through. That's, that's cute. <laughs> you know, things are forged every day here that's on true. the crawl. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next hey. week. Oh, I can't hide.